Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I've got a question for you. Have you ever found yourself out on that golf course and you're feeling a little bit lost? The ball's going over to miles to the left or it's slicing over to the right. Or maybe your ball strike is just not there. You're kind of striking the ground behind the golf ball and thinning it. And you just don't know what to do, right? You have no feeling of what the hell is going on. Well, this was a case for a recent client of mine, John. Comes to see me pretty much ready to give up the game. He has no idea why his balls are going miles to the left and why, at the same time, they're also then sometimes slicing over to the right. Now, he was falling into two major problems. His body was literally opening up way too soon through the impact area here. And secondly, he was getting this very weak connection through impact here. So he was literally getting this flicking of the wrist. We need to get you more ahead here to get some, get some more compression and then we need to look after how we're going to stop this torso working. Well, in this week's training, we're going to show you exactly how we did that with John um, to get him hitting it much, much straighter and more importantly, also getting that lovely sound with a great ball striking too. Before we get into the training though, if you are new to the channel and this is one of your first videos, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. So what was John doing? So John was hitting these great big pulls, big slices, and he, he, wasn't, making, he wasn't making solid contact at all. And he was falling into two traps. First thing, his impact position was very much like this, okay? So very flicky, we call it, right? When the wrist starts to get a little bit cupped here through the impact area, it's, very, it's a very weak position to get into. Any, if you look at any slow mos of the top players, they're very much, if anything, the wrist is the other way around. It's almost like bowed. So it kind of gets a bit like this way. And that's kind of how they're compressing the golf ball. They're almost de-lofting the club through the impact area. That's the first thing. The second thing um, John was doing was he was opening up his torso way too early through the impact area here. And that was causing him to drag the ball to left, but also cut across the golf ball, producing weak shots, so not very far, and drifts up to the right. So he needed to do what, again, a lot of tall players do, and good players do, is he needed to keep that torso much squarer through the impact area, so he didn't want to rotate. Now, problem is, how do you go about doing those things? How do you keep those hands ahead, and how do you keep the torso from actually opening up? Very, very straightforward with a bit of practice. Okay, so all, you want, all I want you to do here is this. I want you to take your golf club, I've just got a seven iron here, and we're gonna start with just maybe shots that are around about 70 to 80 yards, no, no more, maybe even a bit less. And what I want you to do is this. I want you to, first of all, get the sensation, just swing back to maybe about here, and then what I want you to do is this. I want you to drive the handle this way ahead, so it's going forward, right? The second thing I want you to do here is this. I, want, I then want you to feel like the toe of the club is then driving into the ground. So you almost feel like you're going to stick this bit of the club here, the toe, into the ground. So it's two things you're trying to do. You're going to try and get the handle going forward. Is this wrong? Of course it's overdone. But then what we're going to do is we're going to stick the toe of the club into the ground here. Watch what this does. This does a couple of things. Look at it from this angle. John's getting here and he opens up his chest, right? That causes him here to then flick the club down through impacts. He's causing the two, two issues. When you start to drive the handle, just feel like you're going to drive the handle this way for a second, right? Just as a drill. It's wrong, yeah, but it's just a feeling. You drive the handle. Look what happens to the lead shoulder. The lead shoulder now starts to go much, much higher through the impact area. At this stage, I want you to then practice turning the toe of the club down, right? So that you get two things. It changes the whole line of your swing coming down from this position here. You're now getting the sensation of the lead shoulder coming up and the turning of the toe starts to get that firing of the club so it's not wooden, right? Because you don't want to just kind of do this like a cricket drive. Now, the reality of the situation is this. Do you really want to have this position through impact? Of course you don't, that's way too much but we're just generating a feeling. You know, the, the best players in the world and the uh, good players, they realize that they have to exaggerate motions in order just to achieve the tiniest change in their goal swing. So let's have a look at this in action. So, gonna make a swing. I'm gonna feel the lead hand dig, uh, going ahead here, 
this hanging behind, and then I'm going to turn the toe of the club into the ground. So we're trying to try and get the toe digging some turf out. Okay, so it looks a little bit like this. Back and fire. I can really feel my toe turning over there, and look at the sound. Beautiful sound. Ball, turf, contact at the same time. At no stage will you see me doing this. Okay, that just gets the handle dragging across here, bringing in those pulls, bringing in those slices, and also eventually creating very much weak style shots. All right, so nice and simple. We're gonna get ourselves set. Swing to here initially, drive that handle way forward, and then turn the toe of the club so the toe is gonna try and hit the ground first. Okay, having a look at this. Slowly back. and through, leading to beautiful draws. Fantastic, and it is as simple as that. Start very, very small with it. All these things here is this. Do we want our hands to be this far ahead? Of course we don't. I don't want you to have the hands that far ahead. I actually want you to have them, in a sense, around about here. But if you can feel like it's here, then suddenly from this position here, you're gonna naturally get that sensation of this lead I'm uh, coming through, the shoulders coming up and not, by the way, opening. That's what I'd do initially to start off with. Get some practice in it, get a feel, hit a few shots, build it up very gradually and you'll start to get some absolute beauties. Let's uh, have a look at this, how we build this up now into the main swing. So we're swinging it back. I'm gonna get, I'll do a rehearsal, I'll drive that forward here, fire the toe, let's have a look. So it's drive and fire the toe. And that's getting a little bit bigger. And there we go. Okay, so in summary, what have we done? Very, very straightforward. John came to me, only half hour session he came to me for, so very simple. All he was doing, he was opening up the chest too soon. His face was wide open. He was getting this weak contact. We need to achieve a compressed strike through the impact area. And what we need to do is we don't want this torso over, overworked. When you get yourself set here, by literally imagining that the handle is driving this way just for a second here. The shoulder, this as it does this, isn't gonna go rotate, is it, right? If it rotated, it would do this, it's only feeling. Drive it here and then from the toe, then imagine you're gonna stick the toe into the dirt. Drive the handle forward, stick the toe into the dirt and it would start to reduce this motion dramatically, all right? Hope you enjoyed the training. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with a fellow slicer or somebody who's struggling to strike their irons. Some of you will ask, will it work with driver? It will indeed. The only thing you change with the driver is you hit upwards on the driver, so you're not literally trying to stick the toe in the dirt. You'll literally, in a sense, do the same thing, but you've got to remember you're going to hit more this way. But that is pretty much it. Of course, if this is one of your first videos and you enjoyed it and you want to receive more videos next week, make sure you press the subscribe button and the bell. But until next week, have a great golfing week.